Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. This video will be about layout basics and linear layout. As I showed you in the previous videos, to go to the Android layout editor and to actually edit our layout of our main activity here, you need to go to the rest folder under the layout folder and then double click on activity main.xml. And then this layout will open up. In this video I want to make with you such a layout together with some name input fields, a birth date input field, country and an apply button. So how are we going to achieve this? If you take a look in the left here, then you can see all the different elements we could just drag into our layout here. And each of that those elements is called view in Android. So a text view is a view, a button is a view. So view is basically just the superclass of every layout element that exists in Android. And because Android apps have to run on many different devices with many different screen sizes, we need to have a responsive layout. So we cannot just drag the views into that layout like I did here. Instead, we need to use different layout types with which we can tell Android Studio the pattern we want to use for our design. So we don't tell Android Studio the exact positions of the views on the screen. Instead, we describe the relations between different views using layouts. So for example, in that little demonstration I did here, we don't tell Android Studio that this first name text field here is at the position x is equal to 10 and y is equal to, is equal to 10, for example. And this one is at the position x is equal to 10 and y is equal to 50, for example. So instead, we tell Android Studio that this first name text field is next to that last name text field and that they together fill the whole row and that this birth date text field is an, a text field that is alone in one row and that it fills the complete row again. And because of that, we sadly cannot just drag the views into that layout. Instead, we need to use those layout types. And this is what I want to show you in this video. Every layout has a root layout. So every XML file has a root layout. And in this case, this is the constraint layout here. You can see the component tree here. So the layout hierarchy and our root layout here is a constraint layout and it has two children, which are those two text views that just display text here. One that says hello world and one that I just dragged into it that just says text view. I will remove that text view again. And as you can see, this file here is called activity main.xml and it is actually an XML file. And this is just the, re uh, the visual representation by Android Studio that interprets that XML file and shows us how it would look like when we run that app. But to actually see and edit that XML file, we need to click on that text tab below here. And even though Android Studio provides this simple drag and drop layout editor, I recommend not to get used to it because it only provides the most common views, but there are actually many, many more than those that are shown there. And because of that, I will show you from the beginning on how to build layouts directly with XML, even if that's more complicated in the beginning. So we will just write our layout code inside of that file here. And I think that's in the beginning, it's a little bit more difficult, but if you get used to it, it's much easier to directly write that XML code into that file instead of using Android Studio's layout editor. And the first thing I want to do here is I want to replace that constraint layout with a linear layout. Because in this video, I want to show you what a linear layout is and constraint layout is actually something for a later video. So to swap those out, just select that whole tag and write linear layout instead. And Android Studio also suggests you to um, write linear layout here, just press enter and it will also change that tag below here. And the first thing that you can see here are those X, M, L and S attributes. And those are just namespaces for Android Studio that it knows the following layout attributes, like the layout width, the layout height and so on. 
So you always need to specify those URLs at the beginning of an layout file to tell Android Studio which kind of attributes you want to use in that layout file. And normally that are just those three links here. Every view in Android needs to have at least those two attributes here, layout width and layout height, that just define the width and the height of that specific view. So in that case of that linear layout here. And we have three different options for them. The first is like it is here, match parent. That just says that this width or that this height of that view just fills the whole width of the parent. So in our case of that linear layout, the parent is just the whole screen. If we take a look at that text view here, that is set to wrap content. But if we would set that to match parent here, then that would mean that the width of that text view is as wide as this linear layout width is, because this linear layout is the parent element of that text view here. So if we take a look into our design editor here, then you can see that this text view, there is a little blue box around that. And the width of that box just fills the whole screen because our linear layout also fills the whole screen. But we can also set that layout width to wrap content, which just tells Android Studio that it should only take as much space as is needed. So it will only take as much space as this text will take on the screen. So if we now take a look at the design tab, then this box is only as large as the text of that text view is. The third option we have here is to set the width or the height to a fixed amount of dp. dp is short for density independent pixels and that is just a measurement unit in Android that you should use for your views if you want them to have a fixed size. So if we now take a look into that design tab, you can see that the box around our text view now has our custom size of 200 dp. I want to remove this text view here because in our preview we don't have any text views, only input fields and a button. And in Android, each linear layout needs to have another attribute here, which is the orientation, and that can either be vertical or horizontal. I'll set it to vertical here and I will show you now what this means. So if we add um, some edit texts here, so just open a new tag here and write edit text, press enter, and Red Studio will automatically insert the layout width and the layout height. And I will set the layout width to match parent and the layout height to wrap content and then just close that tag off. Then we copy that whole edit text and paste it two times below. And if we now take a look into our design tab, then we can see that all those elements are aligned in rows. And that is basically what this vertical orientation means. So the views inside of that linear layout are aligned vertically. If we change that to horizontal and take a look at the design tab, then you can see we only have one edit text here, but actually we have three in our layout hierarchy. And why is that? If we take a look into our text tab again, then the problem is that we set the width of each of those edit texts to match parent. And there can only be one element that matches the whole parent's width because if it matches the whole parent's width, then there is no space for other views. And because of that, let's just set the width to wrap content for each of that edit text and take a look into the, the, the design tab. And then you can see that now they are very small because no text is inside of those edit texts but they are aligned next to each other in one column and many rows. Um, one row and many columns. And to actually have that behavior that we can put two edit texts next to each other and then other ones below that, we have to include another layout, another linear layout inside of that outer linear layout. So I'll remove those three edit texts again and create a linear layout here with the layout width is match parent and layout height is wrap content. So it will only be as high as the elements in it are. So let's open that tag and inside of that linear layout, 
we put those two edit texts now. But first we need to specify that the orientation of this linear layout is horizontal. So the root linear layout has the orientation vertical because we want to put all the elements um, below each other. And this linear layout, layout has the orientation horizontal because for this particular layout, we want those two text fields to be next to each other. So let's put those two edit texts into that linear layout. Let's write edit text press enter and I'll set those to rep content and rep content and close that tag off. And we can actually also set the hint to first name. That is just the text that appears when the user um, hasn't clicked on that edit text. So if you take a look here, then the hint is just that text that is displayed on the edit text as default. Then we can copy that edit text and paste it below and just change that hint to last name. And if we now take a look into our design tab, then you can see that those two text fields are now aligned next to each other. But currently they don't fill the whole width of our root layout. To achieve that, we need to assign a layout weight to those two edit texts. So we do that by typing layout weight and press enter here and the layout weight determines which view takes how much space inside of a linear layout. So if we take one for this view and the layout, oops, not that one, layout weight also one for this one, that means that the sum of those two weights is two and because each layout has the weight one, means that each of that layouts has um, takes 50% of that um, row's width. So if we take a look now, then you can see that is just how we want to have it. So let's go back and add the next edit text, which is below that closing linear layout tag here. So here we write another edit text, which is which has match parent for the width and wrap content for the height and as hint this is birth date close that tag off and below that now we want to make that country edit text next to that button and because they are um, next to each other again we have to insert another horizontal linear layout into our xml file here again so let's write linear layout press enter the width is match parent and the height is wrap content and the orientation is horizontal. Let's open that tag and add an edit text in here. The layout width is wrap content, layout height is wrap content and we set the hint to country. Close that tag off and after that edit text we finally want to add our button which is also wrap content for the width and wrap content for the height and for the button we need to set the text to apply and now we have the same problem as we had before that those two views don't fill the whole width of that parent layout so we need to assign layout weights again let's do that for this edit text layout weight is equal to one and this one too so when we now take a look into that design tab, then the layout is exactly the way we have it here. And just to explain that layout weight more in detail, we can try to set that layout weight, for example, for that text view, for that edit text, sorry, to three, and we keep it um, at one for the button. Then we can see at the design tab that the country edit text now takes up more space than the button. And that is because we increased the layout weight for the edit text to, so with that we tell Android Studio that this edit text should um, take more space than the other views inside of that linear layout. So more space than this button here. And finally, if you take a look into my preview here, you can see that all those views are actually moved a little bit into the middle 
So we have a little bit of space here to the border of our app. And in our example here, the views and the edit text are just right after the screen starts. And if we don't want this, we can add a padding to the root layout. So a padding just moves all elements that are inside of a layout into the middle of that layout. To do that, we just write padding into that root linear layout. And we can actually add padding only for the top, only for the right, and so on. But I want to add it for every side, so just general padding here. And then if we want to have an extreme example here, we set it to 50 dp, which is just for demonstration. That will look ugly. But by setting it to 50 dp, you will understand what this does. So let's take a look into that design tab. Then you can see the all the views are moved into that middle of that whole linear layout here. And I actually want to have that more decent and I'll set it to 16 dp here, which looks way better in my opinion. So there's only a little bit space between where the sc uh, screen starts and where the view starts. And yeah, that's a quite long video now, but it was a really important video because you always need to design your apps before you can actually program them and use them. And I hope everything got clear and I wasn't too fast. If I was, then don't mind asking your questions in the comments so I can answer them. And yeah, I see you in the next video. Have a good day. Bye bye.